Hello everyone, welcome to our presentation. I am Gayatri Kaude and joining me today is Saeed Nagri. Both of us are from Bharatiya Vidyapeth College of Engineering for Women, currently in third year of computer department. Together, we are excited to demonstrate our data science and big data analytics mini project on the topic of crop recommendation system using the machine learning. Hello everyone, uh, this is Sain Agne from Bharti Vidyapits College of Engineering for Women. I am currently studying in third year computer department. So I have developed a project on crop recommendation system. So basically uh, in crop recommendation system here we have uh, two files that is a python file and the index.html file where we are going to develop the front end using html css and the bootstrap. So for let's first see the interface. So when we run this uh, Python code, uh, we will get here the uh, what we say is the URL from where we can uh, go to the uh, page of our program. So here you can see the link. So when you click on the link. So this is the front page of our uh, pro program. So here we will enter some values randomly. So if I enter here, phosphorus as 100, potassium as um, let's say 400, temperature as 43, humidity suppose 34, pH 5, and rainfall and something 100.7 suppose so and when we click on get recommendation so here we can see the recommended crop is apple so now if we change the values like 30 phosphorus 40 potassium as 45 pH has hit rainfall as 89 and when we click on get recommendation uh, as you can see musk melon is the best crop to be cultivated right here so now let's see uh, the code part so first <clears throat> we will be seeing the code so here we have used numpy and pandas library then uh, we have imported the data using a read.csv and in the crop variable we are going to read the data now using crop.head we will be displaying the first five uh, rows of the data that we have crop.shape will give the shape of our data that is uh, 2200 and comma 8 that are the number of rows so in uh, we can display the info of our data using crop.info now as you can see here nitrogen phosphorus potassium temperature humidity ph rainfall and label these are our uh, columns that we have in our data set and uh, these are these three data types are have in data type and these uh, four have float data types and label is the of object data type now first we have to check if our data set has any null values if there are null values then uh, we have to clean our data set and uh, use some methods for cleaning and replace the null values now using crop.duplicated.sum we can see uh, whether there are any duplicate values in our program crop.describe uh, will describe our uh, data so as he can see here all the values of our data set will be printed so like uh, nitrogen counters uh, 2200 same as for all the values mean of uh, suppose uh, phosphorus is 32.9858883 uh, that is the standard deviation then similarly we can see the maximum value then 25% 50% 75% which are nothing but the quartiles so now let's explore the data now uh, we will be uh, first uh, seeing the correlation if there is correlation between the columns 
so using uh, numeric dot uh, in numeric dot crop variable we will first select the numeric columns only uh, so include is equals to float and int uh, select data types as float and int so here we are selecting the numeric columns now then we will uh, see if uh, what is the correlation between the variables so in uh, using dot uh, corr we can see the correlation and we display it so here you can see the correlation so but as this is not that much visually pleasing to see so we will be using the heat map so for heat map first we have to uh, import c1 library now then using heat map we are he, we are going to pass the variables as correlation that is this data then a note is equals to true and c bar so basically c bar is nothing but the bar that is displayed at the side so c bar is equals to true means the bar will be displayed and cool warm is the color that we are going to be using so as you can see now it the correlation we can see it is visually much pleasing <coughs> so as you can see each uh, variable has a correlation as one with itself so this is as you can see all the diagonal elements are one so now this red represents the positive correlation and uh, blue represents the negative correlation so you can see here that 0.74 so key has positive correlation with p that is uh, 0.74 similarly p has positive correlation with k and these all are the negative correlation values so this is what we will be displaying so now as we have a label uh, column in our data set you can see over here so this is the uh, label column so now what we are going to do is uh, we want to count the values so uh, rice, maize, jute, these are the uh, label values that we have and the count of each of this uh, label is 100 as you can see over here. Now uh, using uh, this plot we will be plotting the some variables so here I have used n to plot so after uh, using this uh, plot we will be seeing this uh, this plot so here we can see that the n that is nitrogen has maximum distribution uh, in the range of uh, 0 to 25 somewhat somewhat at 25 it has the maximum distribution and that is maximum density and then it is increasing and decreasing so now uh, after this we have to encode our data set as we can see every time it's very difficult for us to handle these uh, large uh, labels so what we are going to do is we are going to encode these labels into some uh, values that are integers so here i have created a, a dictionary crop dict so where i have given uh, values to these labels so rice as one maize as two and so on so total we have 22 labels so like uh, this is what we can predict so 22 predictions different predictions can be made for the given input so now uh, what we are going to do is we are going to map this uh, label uh, crop dot dictionary uh, into crop label so and we are going to store it into crop num variable so now when we uh, display the crop num so now we can see here one two three four these are the uh, mappings that we have done now let's move ahead so when we display crop dot head we can see now here the label uh, one more new column is added that is crop num where the values are will be displayed so as rice was given uh, one uh, so rice is the key and one is the value so as the uh, key value pair uh, in key value pair rice has one value so as here for label rice uh, the crop num value is one now let's go uh, into main part that is training and uh, training testing our data set so now first we will uh, uh, use two variables that are x and y so for x uh, whole data set will be considered 
by dropping the two columns that is crop num and label and why we'll be having the column as crop num only so when we display x all columns will be included uh, and these two columns will be dropped from the data set crop num and the label and when we display y only a uh, one column that is crop num will be there so as we can see y shape is uh, nothing but only one column now uh, further we will be importing the train test split from SQL and dot model selection library now uh, for training and testing four variables will be declared as we know that is x train x test y train and y test now using train test uh, split we will be uh, training the data set now as we can see we are going to train tra and test the data set on x and y variables the test size will be 0.2 that means uh, the 20 percent data set will be considered for testing the data and random state is 42 which uh, we can assign any number to it so now when we uh, see x train so we can see 80 percent of the data set will be the training data set as testing is 20 percent of the data set so the remaining 80 percent will be the uh, training data set so uh, we can see uh, 1760 uh, can be considered and when we uh, see the test uh, dot ship x test dot ship the remaining 440 will, uh, rows will be considered now this we will be displaying the x train values now it is important for us to scale the features into some uh, range so there are two methods by which we can do this that is the min max scalar method and the another one is the standardization method so here i will be showing you both the methods so first i have uh, used min max scalar method so min max scalar method is nothing um, but a scaling method where the values are scaled to a given range but one by one the values will be considered for scaling so here first we have imported the min max scalar then an instance is created of that function and then using fit transform we will be uh, scaling those values so when we display suppose x train uh, we can see how the scaling has happened but uh, this is not that much uh, easy to understand so the another method that is there is the standardization so for standardization the syntax remains the same mostly only uh, the standard scalar will be first Im implemented then the instance will be created and then again using the transform we can scale those so now we can see uh, the values uh, this representation is much better than this because in min max scalar one by one values are considered but standards in standard scalar what it does is it considers a group of values altogether so this is much be better for scaling now for training the data set uh, training different training models are there so what i have done is i have uh, imported first all the different models that are available then i have uh, seen the accuracy scores of all these models and the one that is having the greater accuracy uh, is considered so uh, first we have imported all the models such as logistic regression gaussian naive base then the support ve vector machine k neighbors classifier decision tree classifier random forest classifier etc etc now first we will be creating the instance of all these models now instead of uh, running these models and checking the accuracy scores of these models one by one i have uh, directly used a for loop over here which will be used to predict the accuracies of the uh, which will be used to predict the accuracies so here i have used the for name so for name dot uh, comma md in models uh, run this this for loop will be running and then fit uh, we will be fitting these values and then we will be predicting the accuracy scores so this is the output that is printed so logistic regression accuracy is 0.96 naive base is 0 0.995 uh, then support vector machine has accuracy 0 0.96 so as we can see 
uh, here random forest has uh, somewhat greater accuracy that is 0 0.993 so i will be using random forest classifier for this project now uh, again we will be displaying the random forest classifier accuracy score separately so again creating the instance of the random forest classifier model then fitting these values and then predicting the accuracy score now uh, uh, the predictive system part comes over here so what we have is we have different features in our data set that is nitrogen phosphorus potassium temperature humidity ph and the rainfall so what we will be doing is we will be passing these parameters in a, a function called as recommendation so first we will be converting these values into an array so that it is easy for us for calculation then using a uh, fit transform method we will be transferring these features and then uh, using random forest classifier we will be predicting the uh, what will be the output or what will be the prediction for the above uh, values so what we will be doing is we will be reshaping it into one uh, comma minus one that is only a single value will be considered and then we will be returning what is the prediction so let's take an example like if i have passed values n as 40 p as 50 k as 50 temperature as 40 humidity as 20 ph as 100 and rainfall as 100 and if i call the recommendation function on all these values so we have uh, a crop dictionary that we had created so these are these were the values that we have assigned to the numbers so uh, when we call this uh, predict um, variable uh, to display so one value from this crop dictionary will be displayed so now if uh, the value for this will be printed in format as the uh, this is a best crop to be cultivated else uh, if the input values does not match then uh, we will be displaying that sorry we are not able to recommend a proper crop for this environment so when i suppose if we pass these values to the recommendation function uh, it will be displaying the output as papa as the best crop to be cultivated similarly we can pass different values and check uh, what is the output now as uh, we have to connect our front end to the back end so we have to create one pickle file so uh, here we will be at the end creating a pickle file uh, of model then min max scalar and standard scalar so when you run this command and go to your home in crop recommendation so here you can see the pickle files are created so now we can successfully connect our uh, front end to the back end so the further part of front end and back end will be explained by Gayatri so thank you after pre-processing and training the model all the back end and the flask part is done in app.py so firstly from the flask we have imported the flask request and the render template to render the html template in the flask then numpy pandas we have also imported the sklr as our model store in this then we have imported the pickle uh, used for serializing and deserializing the python object secondly we have imported uh, the all the pre-trained pre -trained model like a standard scalar mean max scalar and our model which is being trained model and we have used the rb that is for the read the binary model we have created the flask app to create the flask application instance then the function index is used to uh, render the index.html template when the user visit the root url nextly we have the function credit uh, that maps to the predict url with the method post it handles the form submission which is created in the html file it extracts the form data pre-process it and make the prediction using the pre-trained model and we render the result in index.html template so this is the code for that and we have the conditional block over here 
which ensures a flask app run only if the script is executed directly come into the html code we have the head section then the style section uh, then we have the body section which define the structure of our web page like we have the crop recommendation as our heading in our navbar in navbar we also have the home contacts us and the about section then we have as we have created the form which is uh, having the url as predict and the method as post then we are going to take the input from the user like the nitrogen then phosphorus potassium temperature humidity and the ph also the rainfall and then we'll get the recommendation this is a web page representation of our output then over here we'll display our result with the uh, as the parameter over here and at last we have linked the bootstrap js for the interactive component thank you